Hello everybody, my name is Pierre and this is my advanced chem draw video tutorial that is intended for everybody using this software who would like a way to draw molecules a little bit faster. To show you what I'm talking about and what you actually can do with chem draw, as an introduction I am going to draw Viagra under 20 seconds. So you're probably wondering how I'm doing this, well that is the point of this video and I will cover that very soon. And we're almost down here and that will be less than 20 seconds now. So to be fair I could have also done this under 5 seconds as I happen to know the generic name of Viagra is sealed in a field. I type, select, Control shift n and I get the structure. And this way you can also double check that I didn't draw anything wrong. Before we get into details I'll start with general shortcuts. Let's just draw a molecule quickly here. This is L-serine. So with the marquee tool selected, if you double click on a molecule, you select the whole molecule. And if you hold shift while you move it, it moves it straight, horizontally, or vertically. When you have a molecule selected, if you hold control and then drag, you will quickly make copies of the same molecule. So of course now we can combine both, control shift and then drag, and you will quickly make aligned copies of the same molecule. If you hold shift and continue double clicking you will select define objects and double clicking again on it will deselect them. Now a small trick for reactions. Let's say we have a reaction like this and this. Reaction with reagents and conditions. So if you take the marquee tool and double click on the arrow you select the entire reaction including what stands above and below the arrow and this way you can quickly copy entire reactions. Now a couple more shortcuts let's change molecules for this I'm gonna go with tryptophan yes I like amino acids so with the molecule selected if you hold control shift alt and then H you flip the molecule horizontally and with V you do the same vertically Note that if you do not hold ALT, only control SHIFT and then H or V, you flip the molecule but you do not retain the stereochemistry. A convenient feature of this action is that you can flip only a part of a molecule. So for this I'm going to introduce another shortcut to the lasso tool. When you have the marquee tool selected, if you hold ALT, it switches it to the lasso tool. So this way, you can conveniently access only part of a molecule selected like so. And now if you press Control shift alt h you flip only a part of the molecule. Lastly, I'd like to cover the cleanup function, and for this I'm going to draw quickly a porphyrin scaffold. I draw a couple of five-membered rings here that I connect, and if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I am simply holding ALT down while I'm using the solid bond tool, and it allows me to get the bond length that I want. So now I'm going to select the molecule, and press Control shift k and in general I'll have to press it several times to get to something that I'm satisfied with. So now we're gonna double check the structure as usual. I write porphyrin, I select, I press Control shift n and I get the structure. There you go. Okay, let's now move on to the real thing and that is the hotkeys. Hotkeys are the reason why I'm able to switch between drawing tools like this without even reaching the toolbar. Also, this is how I can modify bonds and atoms. For example, by default, if you go over a bond and press 2, you make it a double bond. If you go over an atom and press O, you get an oxygen, and press N to get a nitrogen. So it's all very intuitive, but in practice, I'd prefer to have it customized my way, and this is what this video is about. To customize things, you need to find one file named hotkeys.xml. To locate it, you have to go to File, then Preferences, then Directories tab, and that will give you the path to several chemdraw folders and you have to follow the one that ends with chemdraw items. Now for Windows user you have to be careful about one thing is that program data is a hidden folder by default so you need to enable show hidden folder options in Windows. Okay so once you have found that file you go to hotkeys you open with a basic text editor and this is what things look like inside. So it's important to know that one given hotkey can have up to three different actions and this is why in this file you have three different sections. So the first section here, object type equals atom, 
is where we're going to find all the shortcuts that apply to single atoms in ChemDraw. In the second section, object type equals bond, is where we're going to find all the shortcuts that apply to bonds. And the last section, the generic section, is where we're going to introduce shortcuts to quickly access drawing tools. So to show you how to customize things yourself, I'm going to fully customize one hotkey that I don't use, and that is the hotkey U. So first, I'm going to go to the first section and just copy-paste one line, like here. And now I'm going to change the hotkey value to U. The command is label text, so it modifies an atom. And I'm going to change it to CU, so now when I will go over an atom and press U, it will label it with a copper. To show you that things are case sensitive, I'm also going to introduce another hotkey, capital U, that will label an atom with, let's say, the word awesome. Don't worry about the description, what is written inside the description part has absolutely no impact on the hotkey or the shortcut itself. Now we're going to go to the bond section and here I'm going to copy paste again one line like so and I'm going to assign the hotkey U the command is bond order and I'm going to give it the value 4 so now when I will press U over a bond it will transform it into a quadruple bond so now I'm going to go over the last section and I'm going to introduce well you can see that I have already quite a few things customized myself so I'm going to copy paste one line and I'm going to introduce the hotkey U as a generic action it will select the TLC plate tool so the command is tool mode and the value here now is TLC plate and I will show you the different commands a bit later so now we're done I'm gonna close and yes I want to save the changes so now we're gonna check that everything worked properly I'm gonna draw a couple bones like this now I will go over this atom and press U and then I get a copper over this one I press capital U and I get the word awesome if I go over this bond and press U I get a quadruple bond and now over nothing I press U and then I get the TLC plate tool and you're welcome important notes before you start playing with that file I'd suggest you make a copy as a backup so here copy paste and be original and name it backup so rule number one if you change the syntax of the hotkeys file none of the shortcuts you've made will be accessible so for example the hotkeys backup file that I just created will not be recognized by ChemDraw anymore rule number two customize your keyboard one key at a time make one change close save and make sure that it's working as you want also stick to letters and figures no symbols or punctuation among all the commands available in ChemDraw there is the sprout command that I find to be the most useful one and yet not many people know about it so by default if you position yourself over an atom and press zero you sprout one bond if you press nine you sprout two and if you press eight you sprout three but then of course I have it customized a different way the very nice feature of this command is that it works when you have other drawing tools selected for example I have the benzene ring tool and I can just sprout one bond here and then a couple others like this without changing the tool and this way I draw a triddle group very quickly another very interesting feature of this command is that it applies to the last active atom meaning the last atom that was either generated or touched with the cursor for example I can quickly generate an alkyl chain by positioning myself over this atom moving away and then pressing repeatedly the hotkey corresponding to sprout one bond same here and the same here Additionally, you can label atoms and continue sprouting bonds. For example, I sprout a couple once, I introduce an oxygen, a couple more, more oxygen, and then I want to end dimethyl, so I'm going to introduce a nitrogen, and then press sprout two bonds. And then, of course, I can continue, but I have to be careful about one thing, is not to type two different characters too quickly, one after the other. Otherwise, the software will assume, like here, that you're trying to type something, and the text tool will come up. It may also happen that the bonds you're generating with the sprout command close into a six-membered ring. And I don't have an answer as to why it happens sometimes yes, sometimes not. But my advice is assign a hotkey to the acyclic chain tool, like this. And when you have an alkyl chain to draw, then just use that tool. 
And also, by the way, when you have this acyclic chain tool selected, if you hold control while you move it, it follows the movement of the mouse. You also have the possibility to quickly generate fused ring systems by positioning yourself over a bond and press 5, 6, 7, or 8. And by default, if you position yourself over a bond and press 0, you get a chair cyclohexane. Now, one crucial detail is, if the last cycle tool that you used was non-aromatic, then all the rings that will be generated will be saturated. If the last cycle tool that you used was aromatic, then everything you will generate will be unsaturated, like this. If you would like to customize these yourself, then the command for that is fuse ring, and it's present by default on PC versions of ChemDraw, but not on Mac, where you have to input it manually in the hotkeys file and it may not work on early versions of ChemDraw. If you're interested, here is my personal setup for ChemDraw, and I have described things for a QWERTY keyboard. I'm only giving the shortcuts that I use most often, so you should feel free to use it as a starting point and customize it for your specific needs, since we all do different kinds of chemistries. If you want to customize the hotkeys for drawing tools, I have written below here all the commands corresponding to each tool, and I guess they are self-explanatory. Remember, they have to be placed in the third section of the hotkeys file and written in capital letters. So in the last section, I will go over another very useful feature of ChemDraw, and that is the nickname. I will demonstrate how useful a nickname can be by drawing Taxol here under 5 seconds. There you go. So of course, the point here is that I drew Taxol myself beforehand, but I only drew it once, and then I created a nickname for it. And now if I need to draw it again, I can just type this and expand the label. You're already using nicknames yourself when you type the name of protecting groups, for example. The buck group, or TBDPS, here. ChemDraw understands which group you are drawing, because their structures have been predefined. To check what they are, you can just select the labels individually, or a whole molecule, and then go to Structure, like here, and expand the label. Or the shortcut version of this, select Alt-S, then E. But more than protecting groups, you can also define nicknames for large molecules that you may use on a daily basis. For example, carboxytetramethylrhodamine, or Tamara, is a commonly used fluorescent group. And right now I am just drawing it quickly using all my shortcuts, and I will show you how to create a nickname for that. And there you go. One important thing is, when you define a label, you need to select the molecule without a connecting bond. And this is where the lasso tool becomes really useful. Remember, you hold Alt with the marquee tool selected, and then select everything except the connecting bond. Then you go to Structure, Define Nickname. And you type what you want, in my case, Tamara. Be careful, it's case sensitive. And then you save. Now again, the shortcut version, since you may have noticed that I like shortcuts. Alt S, then N, and then you define the nickname. So we just saw a single connection label, but you can also create a label with two connecting points, and one convenient example of this would be if you use a polyethylene glycol spacer. Let's just say that you use a PEG spacer like this one. You need to press dot over the atom that you want to define as the first connecting point. Be careful with the order that you define, as it will determine how the label is connected when you draw it later. And I define this one as the second connecting point. By the way, you cannot define more than two connecting points. Now I take the lasso tool, I select, then shortcut Alt, S, then N, and I define the nickname as PEG. So now we're going to make sure that everything worked properly. I'm going to draw lysine the lazy way. I type lysine, I select Control shift n Now I draw one bond and I write PEG. Now another bond coming from the PEG and Tamara. And you will notice that nothing lights up in red, and that if I ask the molecular weight, I actually get a number. So let's make sure everything is properly connected. I'm going to expand the labels, and then some cleanup with Control shift k and there you go. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please spread it around to your friends and colleagues who use ChemDraw. If you'd like to know more about me, my name is Pierre Morieux. I'm a UNC Chapel graduate in pharmaceutical sciences, and now a postdoc in medicinal chemistry. You can find me on LinkedIn, and if this tutorial has been helpful to you, you can just drop me a line to say thanks. Now, thank you for your attention, and have a good one.